Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm Managing Director of AlphaLink Engineering, and I am happy to present you one of our most recent solutions in the world of large-scale drone applications. So I'm really happy to be with you, uh, with you here today to talk in this session of the Inter-Aerial Solutions 2020 on the drones for the public health and safety topic. As we have experienced a very challenging uh, year, or at least three quarters of the year, we feel that the application of drones, especially in the sector of public health, is something that will be really valuable in the future, not only for us as a company, but also for the, the region, Germany, Europe, and the whole world. And this is why I'm especially happy to talk to you today about a recent project that I've just mentioned, which is the delivery of clinical goods in urban areas as a broader topic, and then with a special focus on our application case, which is in Berlin city where we are based. So let me start with an initial challenge that we faced right in the middle of the, um, of the, the first wave of the COVID crisis in about June, July, where we were faced with um, a cooperation um, like intent or starting that was with the drone company LabFly. So LabFly is in, uh, also based in Berlin and has the delivery drone that you can see on the left-hand side. It's equipped with eight rotors and it's perfectly tailored to do medical and medical equipment delivery. On the other hand, we, AlphaLink, as a system engineering company and a drone service company, we uh, thought to team up with the lab fly, uh, fly drone to do what ex exactly we're talking about, which is the delivery of the medical drones in the urban area. As you can see on the right-hand side, the combination of the drone from one company and the system of our company created certain challenges, but also a certain common goal, which was enabling the beyond visual line of sight operation in urban areas. What we are targeting is to provide a flight envelope protection system that helps the drone to safely operate in the urban areas and therefore receive an approval uh, or a general permission to operate at scale. Because what we know is that although some individual cases of drone or medical transportation have been shown to be successfully conducted with drones, what we need is a regular day by day, sometimes hour by hour operation at scale of a fleet of drones in order to provide the testing capabilities in the COVID situation or the urgent transport of blood, organs, or other urgent medication. So what the system that we are working on that should enable the beyond visual line of, uh, beyond visual line of sight operation has two main functions. So first, it should automatically identify that A, the drone leaves its flight envelope, which is critical, or B, that it operates out of any approved area. And in either case, when the system observes that what shall be triggered is a rescue system that ends the operation and securely and safely puts the drone to the ground to avoid any accidents or damage or hurts of people or objects or the environment. So who are we to actually tackle this challenge of beyond visual line of sight operation at scale for urban drones? We at AlphaLink are based in Berlin. We are specialized in mechatronic applications in the aviation industry. And we have a history that actually equips us with what exactly is needed to do the development that is provided to the LabFly system. So what we do is the planning and modeling and particularly the design of the mechanical and electrical systems at our backup system will be. What is particularly important is the understanding of the control of any systems, which will be related to the drone actually flying the medication, but also the system monitoring the flight conditions. On top of that, we were also involved in the past in the design and implementation of different um, embedded systems, 
and also the development and the deployment of cyber physical systems that is, for example, needed to do a particular testing simulation beforehand. Any of a new drone equipment or component can receive an approval by the aviation authority. So since we, with these competencies, felt secure to, to actually tackle the challenge of enabling large-scale urban medical drone delivery, what we needed was the competent partner to actually provide a drone itself. And in LabFly, we exactly found this partner. As we are, LabFly is a spin-off from the Technical University of Berlin and has provided a drone that is perfectly designed to do medical transportation. It has certain features, as you can read here, which is the precise landing and the autonomous control and full electric operation. It has already been included to work in a satellite independent flight conditions and to be able to operate on a cloud-based flight control. And what was particularly important here, it was equipped with its own parachute safety system. That, for one hand, was one of the pre-requirements uh, or preconditions that we had to take into account when dealing with our backup system to make the delivery of the medication actually possible. And as well, the functionalities, as well as also the, um, the drone itself, was therefore perfectly tailored for medical deliveries. And with their system, the LabFly, they already had experience within the Asian region, where often medical delivery and medical treatment is centralized, as for example in Thailand and Bangkok, and then operation in urban areas was always a big challenge. So let us have a small look on how their system works. So some of you might have seen the LabFly presentation of CEO Tim Fischer yesterday, but now let us look at the Berlin case. If we look at the map of Berlin, we can see that the area is quite large and widespread. Looking at the actual numerous numerical facts, we see that there are about 890 square kilometers of area, which is quite large. Looking at the number of people, we see that by the end of last year, about 3.7 million people were residents in Berlin. And together with tourists, we see uh, that sometimes count four up to five million people gathering around in the city. On average, the population density, density does not seem to be too high with around four people per square kilometer. But most of you who have been to Berlin already know that particularly during the day, there are a lot of cars, human uh, buildings and different vehicles on the street. So there's a lot of traffic going on. It's a highly densely populated urban area. On top of that, Berlin, at least at the moment, counts two airports and has a lot of more restricted flight areas, flight corridors due to the parliament or other regions. Therefore, the Berlin case presents a particularly challenging environment to enable the drone delivery. Good news is it's not impossible. So LabFly recently have announced a pilot project with the customer Charité CFM facility management to do medical delivery in, in the city. And they have, as you can see on the photos here, had the permission to do actually that. The CFM as the logistics company of the Charité, Berlin's leading um, hospital chain, has, is the perfect partner to actually test 
and later on scale the delivery of medical equipment or medication. And now, since we know what the advantages are of the delivery, let us have a look at the system that in the future will enable the beyond visual line of sight operation at scale. So what are the actual advantages of the backup system? So first, although being designed for the LabFly drone, the system itself will be able uh, or will be platform independent and therefore can provide a solution for other drone systems as well. This will be particularly important when we're talking about larger scale drones or maybe even fixed wing drones that can provide large or can cover larger distances. The flight envelope protection that I was initially talking about is so important because it can reduce the SORA target score. And this is really necessary to be able to, re to pass the, um, the SORA analysis and therefore receive the flight permission. On top of that, on top of the flight envelope protection function, we have some additional functions like geofencing and collision avoidance already integrated. And because to the low weight or due to the low weight, not only the copter, as the left front drone is presented here, but also other existing or even future systems will be able to be equipped with that system. When we had been starting with the development of the system, we put our development from scratch on the ground of our experiences in the past. Here, just as a reference for you, is the overview of our Smart FC project, where we designed an autopilot on uh, also from scratch to be able to be operated for different drone systems. If you might ask yourself why we do not use the PixHawk initially, then you might be familiar with the open source and open source community history of that platform. With the PixHawk, a lot of drones are operating and they do so safely and precisely. However, in order to deal with a functional, uh, functionally safe system, as our backup system is designed to be, we cannot rely on third-party commercial off-the-shelf hardware. Particularly in the aviation industry, at least until now in the European regulation, the use of the PIXOC is not entirely confirmed, and therefore we decided to build the system on our own solution. And the experiences that we had assembled in our Smart FC project, where we had actually followed the whole process for an autopilot development, was exactly the perfect base for our upcoming backup system development. The smart backup approach that we follow is creating a functionally safe system that reduces the SORA score by providing a flawed envelope protection system. Our development process was guided by a development guideline. And on top of that, we were considering different level of safety integrity, SIL, in order to provide a system that guarantees a safe operation of the drone and also a perfect tailoring to the actual application, which in our case is beyond visual line of sight operation in urban areas with potentially high damage. Our development process follows the well-established uh, V model that is most often denied currently in the software development process, but has in the history of aviation a strong background. The advantage is that it serves as a playground in order to do the development that then later on can be more easily accepted or approved by the aviation authority. So how does the backup system look at the very end? What you can see here is that basically the backup system is a black box between different inputs, you see on the left-hand side, and different outputs. Within between, we have some required and optional internal interfaces, and we have a certain type of data storage. The standard inputs, but also the further inputs, were well chosen in order to fulfill the requirements for the safety of the system that we need. Because I am not too deep integrated in the technical development of the system, I ask our colleague Damian to provide you with some more technical details. As he cannot be with us here today, I'll record it, a video of him, which I will show to you, where he will present 
the solution in a little bit more technical information. So hi, I'm Damien. As um, Dania said, I, I took over the part of requirements engineering um, in the project Smart Backup, and I'd like to give you a little uh, technical um, insight in our project. So um, Dania already said we um, developed the Smart uh, Backups uh, safety system following the uh, ISO IEC 61508 norm. And we did that so we could acquire and gu guarantee uh, uh, functional safety um, so that uh, a safe flight of drones over urban, urban areas is uh, possible, is guaranteed. And the system mainly, the main function is to detect an emergency situation and uh, deploy the parachute or actually send the signal so the parachute can be deployed. Um, so that um, the drone can land safely on the ground with the vertical velocity that, that is not too high. Um, the main functions of the system are um, to detect um, the emergency situation. For example, if the um, drone leaves the flight envelope, so um, by measuring um, the angular rates and the attitude of the drone and analyzing those uh, data, we can, um, the system can decide whether the flight condition is stable or unstable or safe or unsafe and decide whether to um, deploy the parachute or not. We also um, want to uh, check on the position of the drone. We want the drone to fly in a um, safe area and not to leave this area. So if it leaves for a longer period of time, the safe area, and for example, into a prohib prohibited area, which may be um, of, a, um, of a airport or something similar, then we want to deploy the parachute as well. And then we also want to cover the function of um, uh, collision avoidance and internal um, function failure, for example, of the battery of the radio connection. As I said, with the deployed parachute, we can guarantee um, a safe landing of the drone, which in a city, for example, Berlin is very important. With that, I'd like to give back to Daniel and thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Damian. And after this really technical input, let us have a second look on how the future will look like when the whole function is in system. So first, currently, we are in ongoing communications with the local um, aviation authorities for the Berlin-Brandenburg region. We're quite optimistic to be able to showcase the, um, the application and the actual operation quite soon. And then later on, for sure, what we will intend is to deliver the, the system and also to coordinate with various um, other aviation authorities across the country. What we will also do is um, consider a full review of the Berlin city case to cover actually the whole area. I showed you a map of the, um, of the large scale of the city. So we will not only consider to connect different, uh, for example, hospital or testing facilities, but also provide a solution that can be applied in the city and then later on be able to be a role model for deployment in other cities. For sure, once this is um, achieved, we will go beyond the national level and try to implement a solution also on the European level. And therefore we hope for the harmonization to come starting from January 1st of next year. Meanwhile, the, with the permission process with the aviation authority, we are intensifying our cooperation with LabFly and, for example, do also test out to extend the system, not only to monitor the flight conditions, but maybe also to monitor an um, external system for decoupled transport, because we realized that while the drone itself is perfectly tailored to a certain number of samples to be carried, that further equipment 
or different type of clinical goods. They need special conditions. So we are working closely with the lab fly team to also enable that further applications soon. And then last but not least, we are targeting ESA to be integrated in the current um, Galileo program, where we will use the Galileo data as a primary source to create redundancy for the position determination. And with this nice view of the current situation in Berlin, I would like to thank you for attention. And I am really happy to receive more comments from you and discuss the Berlin city case and its role model function for the rest of the country. Thank you.